This is going to be a conversation between Richard and I. Uh, we met recently over Wapka. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a dialogue. It's not going to be a formal presentation. Mm. Um, it's a reading, and it is an act of retrieval, a mining of an archive. Yeah. Do you want to answer that, Richard? Um, well, I want to start off by saying that, firstly, um, if anything, WAPCO definitely caught me off guard completely, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to convey that to you, or you'll be able to feel as, woo, this poet, as I did about him, you know? Um, but with that being said, I, I also realized that his work is very important, and it's very sad almost that a lot of um, the contemporary young poets don't know anything about him, um, specifically in South Africa, specifically in Johannesburg, specifically in the inner city, because that was um, where he was based at some point. But also, I mean, all over, he was based here in Swaziland as well. And I think we'll, we'll take a little biographical tour in terms of um, where he's from, what he did. Um, but most importantly for me is um, just the understanding or, or, or at least just just allowing yourself to at least um, give him the time of day, listen to, to what he said, as crazy and as out of this world it, as it might seem, to really just open yourself up to um, to just accepting a bit of crazy in your life, for lack of a better phrase. For those of you who don't speak of the cards, yeah. as they say, sorry for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, 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 we because we, we, we do care about you, we've tried to keep the Afrikaans poems to a minimum, yeah. but we can't read Wapko without reading them. And so we hope that in the performance of reading, if the meaning escapes you, the spirit will not. Yeah. Um, so Wapko was born in 1939 in Fentersdorp. It's the first of many ironies. Fentersdorp became the home, was the home of Eugene Terra Blanche, the leader of the AWB. Uh, which is also where his uh, uh, the trial of the two men who murdered him was recently conducted. Mm. He was born to a father of Frisian extraction from the Netherlands and a mother whose surname was Kutsia. His mother died of breast cancer when he was eight. So I'm giving you a very quick biography here. His brother drowned mm at 10 years uh, when Wapko himself was 11. Yeah. A poem by Wapko Jensma, my brother. As clear as day I remember, my younger brother, he left home one morning and never came back. I remember we went to the river. I saw his body sleeping under the water. I did not cry, but I remember his quiet face as he lay in his coffin with nose and mouth stuffed with clean cotton wool. I remember I was not surprised when I saw him a week later, greeting me from amidst the crowd at the market of our village. So Wapko uh, attended high school in Middleburg in, the, in Afrikaan, many Afrikaans. Um, he went to Afrikaans high school yeah. in Middleburg and then he went on to University of Potchester which is where Richard is from. Yeah. And uh, the University of Pretoria for a while. He didn't do very well at other universities. Um, and while he was at university, he began to travel as many South Africans did to what was then Lorenzo Marx in Maputo. And on one of these visits, sometime in the 1960s, he met a woman called Lib Lydia Tabede. And this was the woman um, he eventually married in 1967 in Swaziland, very close to here. Uh, we spoke earlier of one of the reasons we're talking about this topic in this place. Um, and for, for Wapko, Swaziland was um, a place to escape to with his, with his wife. Um, they weren't in Swaziland initially for very long. They were here for about a, for several months. And then they moved to Botswana and he taught in Swinning High School in Sarawai. Okay. Sarawai General Dealers, PTY Limited. 
A grimace this scape in you, and here could be anywhere. A kotla yonder under a big tree, an old man raising hell in their skulls. A woman, oh woman of my village, a clear yell, a spilt utsukhile. And here could be anywhere. A lone goat thorns its eyes, mud hut, a morukuru tree bleaches sun, and we are everyone. Home shop is your shop. Tsayana. That means come inside. Um, they, the family went back to, uh, left Botswana and went back to Nanzini. Uh, his third child, his son, was born in Nanzini. And at that point, um, or leading up to that point, his marriage with Lydia deteriorated significantly. Uh, there were allegations on his part of violence in the marriage. Um, but by all accounts, it was a very troubled relationship from which Wapka was eventually extracted by a friend. Um, and he left for Pretoria in 1971. So he'd spent in all about three years living either here or in Botswana and then uh, went back to South Africa in 1971. And this is what he had to say in a letter that he wrote um, some years later. I left von Rendsburg, von Rendsburg was the headmaster of the high school that he was teaching at, because life with my wife became intolerable. Now I don't know how long it will still last. I'm not aggressive and I don't believe in violence, and as violence is used against me, the only thing I know is to get as far away as possible. I can now see what a big fool I've been, how I've taken humiliation after humiliation, how I've suffered and here's the, the punchline, for a dream that wasn't worth dreaming. Yeah. So the moment we begin to talk about WAPCO and non-racialism, we enter, we enter a very fraught terrain um, that is by no means plain sailing mm -hmm. for, for this man and for his family, um, whom he eventually left. He left three children and pretty much lost contact with them once he was back in South Africa. In the process, uh, I'm certain um, creating a set of difficult relationships. Um, and really, we cannot begin to speak of another's life in the way that we might be tempted to. Um, I think that for Jensma, Whatever dream it was he refers to in this letter, and he is a poet, he takes great poetic license with his own life as well as the lives of others, uh, we speak very cautiously. Yeah. We'll listen to him. I am a dirty little room with spiders in the corner of my skull, my mouth a dark pit into which human droppings disappear. The speck of rust in my heart worries me. Many people breathe in and out of me. I am at ease with the world. Only the speck of rust worries me. Um, I think that's that's dealing with, with Wapko and, and maybe a little bit of his own personal personal issues. But um, beyond that as well, I just wanna, before we go any further, read the one way where it deals a bit with his humor and, and also just, um, I guess shows shows that this guy isn't all anti-establishment and um, there's really a human in there that, that experiences different things. This is um, turned into one of my favorites actually after we read it last night. Dear Sir, in lieu of the merchandise as per request dated 9, 9 of the, rather the 9th of the 9th 1999, order number ZZA1. Your invoice BB707 for the sum of 33 Rand and 33 cents. I'd like to, in lieu of the above mentioned merchandise, sir, I'd like to hand in herewith my complaint. The merchandise not being, definitely not, as advertised in your catalogue. Glossy color photograph on page 77 refers. The merchandise not being flawless as advertised, but faulty with several defects. First of all, I found the broad loaded with blackheads and pimples that she had rotten teeth 
and that she is an alcoholic. She is mentally, that she is mentally disturbed, all this taken into account, dear sir. Sorry to say, sir, I failed to enter the paradise of erotica as advertised. Dear sir, I can't comply and return here with your merchandise by registered post, number OK88. And what's more, sir, I found that she wasn't made of rubber at all. Thank you. So, um, by the middle of the 1980s, and this sort of brings to an end this extremely cursory biography of Wapko, by the middle of the 1980s, he's really unable to work anymore. He suffered for many years from schizophrenia, and his deterioration, his mental deterioration, meant that he, he could no longer work. Uh. Um, before we began, a gentleman approached me um, and asked me what we were going to talk about, and I mentioned that we were talking about Wapko, mm. and he said to me that he had met him. So you're probably the only person in this room who met Wapko. Wow. Um, in 1988, he's included in a very key exhibition curated by Stephen Sack at the Johannesburg Art Gallery called The Neglected Tradition in 1988. He doesn't come to the opening. And in 1993, uh, he's living in the men's hostel of the Salvation Army in Johannesburg. The, the hostel burns down and Wapko is last seen in mm. the general vicinity of the men's hostel and never seen again. She's gone to the bar again. Dogs gnaw at me. In what state will I find her? Drunk, passed out, I feel the dogs. There she sits at the bar counter, all tarted up and ready for the man who winks the eye. But I am not the one. I only caught her to the bar or home. The man in the white suit, listen to him because he talks just truth. The potato tiptoe in. Because he talks just truth. Listen to him, the man in the black suit. Under a stone, I found a drop of blood, still shining, like I first set foot in paradise. That's still hell. I can only offer you my hand till the wind inhales me. Why? The sea is so calm today. Not the slightest breeze. Ah, here, my hand at last. Yeah. Richard, please, would you also read Klop in Fergilla, Salibir, Wurtgema, Tuchema, Wurt. As a belief. As a belief. Um, to all my American friends, as a belief means give me money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> means please. <laughs> But uh, I'll take that, that um, definition if you want to use it on me. Klop en vir jylle sal toegemaak word. Basically what it means in English is knock and um, it shall be closed. Unto you it shall be closed. Beethoven was a schizophren. So mag die siel wetenis my verstaan. Gauguin was a schizophren. So la die tigkometie my dit voel. Baudelaire was a schizophren. En ook bonop is hy aan syphilis dood. François Villon, Villon, how do you say his name? Villon. Villon. François Villon was. Paul van Ostien was. Marcel Duchamp was. Hendrik Marsman was. Tristan Tsara was. Ons benodige gemeenskap wat werk in nes a bijenkorf of miernes. Waar elkeen sy of haar plig in hierdie saak ken of beken. Besoek jou kerk gereed, gereeld. Moe nie jou werk verander nie. Koop jou televisie stel, luister nies, lees korante, koop a bouwgenootskap huis. Dring op aan, kus seep. Betaal a begrafnis polis af. Eugene Marais was a schizofeen en boon op verslaaf aan morfien. Dumile was a schizofeen Wolf Kibbel was a schizophren. Ken Temba was. Vincent Swart was. Net Nakasa was. 
Cyprian Chilako was. Keep him with Ketsi was. Raditlari was a schizophrenian. En op Mosorski se Kalberg doet. Harold Ruben was a schizophrenian. David Boetes was a schizophrenian. Is ik nou om te wees en om te gloeien? Niet alle dieren is olifanten niet. Niet alle dieren is donkies niet. Niet alle dieren is hyenas niet. Niet alle dieren is siakuie niet. Niet alle dieren is rhinosters niet. Niet alle dieren is zebras niet. Niet alle dieren is bokken niet. Niet alle dieren is apen niet. Niet alle dieren is schapen niet. Partij is ijstervarken en krumvarken. So, to translate just that last yeah. refrain, uh, not all animals are elephants, not all animals are hyenas, not all animals are, are donkeys. donkeys, not all hippopotamuses are hippopotamuses. <laughs> That's the plural of hippopotamus, ne? Hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> not all, <laughs> all monkeys are monkeys. monkeys. Not all zebra, um, zebras are zebras, um, not all sheep are sheep. Some are um, hedgehogs. And did we find out what Krimfarka is? Krimfarka. And Krimfarka, which, kind of which is some <laughs> kind of pig. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> that's basically what he says. Um, so, what, what Richard and I agree on, um, there, there, there are many uh, interpretations of Jensen's poetry, and they tend to fall into two broad camps. Um, mm. He's either a political poet, or he's a poet who is concerned entirely with his own anxiety. Um, and in reading and rereading this poetry together, um, in the context of South Africa, one begins to understand that if you're a poet about your own anxiety, it is because you are a political poet and because you find yourself in South Africa. Mm. In fact, it is that contingency um, that makes you neither political nor personal, as well as both political and personal in the same moment. Um, just to talk a little bit more about the archive uh, that, that does in some way capture Jensma. In the 1970s, in South African literature, um, a great rush of publishing of literary journals happened between about 1956 and, uh, and the early 80s. And this is where Wapko Jensma and many other very interesting poets uh, launched their, their careers as poets. Their career as a poet. I don't, mm. I don't know if you can talk about <laughs> career as a poet. Um, yes, but launched themselves into the world in some way. Yeah. Um, and... There are three in particular, I'm not going to talk about all of these journals, there, there are a dozen or so that were really critical to our understanding of the development of South African literature in the 1970s and 80s. The three in particular, um, Ofer is one. Um, Ofer was published for about nine years, I think. Uh, and what's extraordinary about this particular uh, little publication um, was that in spite of the fact that many of the journals that preceded it touted themselves and really championed a kind of avant-garde um, yeah. and described themselves as representative in terms of who they published and whose voices they sought, many of them were overwhelmingly white um, in their representation. And a number, um, this one was preceded by a journal called The Classic, which really is, the, is uh, critical mm. for its giving space to black mm. poets and black writers in South Africa. Um, but then it's followed by OFA and uh, a journal called Izwi, mm. eventually by the new classic. Um, and then eventually in 1976? Yeah, 75, 6, yeah. Uh, is Staff Rider, mm. uh, which still exists. Um, and what's interesting about this is Wally Soroti on the front cover, another South African poet. Um, Wally Soroti, Wapko Yensma, Mafika Gwala, mm. and another poet by the name of Michael McNamara were really the poets who were the sort of um, 
cornerstones of, of OFA during its, during its run. By Staff Rider, which is late 70s, early 80s, Jensma has completely vanished. He's not, um, he may have been represented in one or two volumes here, but he has, he has vanished from the South African literary scene. Um, which is a presence, uh, a vanishing, mm. that is deeply felt not only because the poetry disappears, but because these extraordinary images disappear. Uh, he, he illustrated many of the covers of these journals, uh, many of them included his artwork. Um, and in fact, OFA, which was eventually taken over, the last three issues of OFA were published by Raven, which became a very important publishing house in, in South African literature. They were the publishers who published all three of, of Jensen's volumes mm -hmm. in 73, 75, and 77. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, in the 1975 volume called Where White is the Color, Where Black, Black is, is the, the number. number, was banned. Um, mm. uh, and Richard and I were talking about why that particular one is banned mm. because in fact we think the other two are in some ways more incendiary mm. uh, we think the other two are just too difficult for the, <laughs> the sensible <laughs> 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 um, but what does distinguish um, that volume in particular is the photographs uh, mm. shot by a number of Mozambican photographers and we think that's what pissed off the censor they were photographs of black people um, mm. and I suspect yeah. that was really yeah um, but you had something yeah to tell I think about just it. just just to touch on um, on uh, offer in particular um, what it was really considered this is this is word along the grapevine um, uh, Mafika Gwala says that the reason a lot of people actually were black authors or black poets were drawn to submitting to offer was because they read the work of Wapko Jensma and um, a lot of them thought that he was a black poet. So um, in terms of just non-racialism and sort of going towards that, uh, blurring that line of um, where am I, who am I, what do I represent through the writing, um, I think Jensma, Jensma, that definitely acts as, a, or rather stands as a landmark um, for, for um, the, the, the ideas, you know, of non-racialism and going beyond just um, I am white, I am black, these are my issues, those are not your issues. But the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is um, specifically in relation to the, the literary magazines, was um, um, the censorship. And I don't know if you maybe want to touch on that, because I have a poem where he responds to, um, I think it's uh, Lionel Abrams. Um, L Lionel Abrams yeah. said, um, I think he was really, uh, he was a little bit scathing about... Yeah. Uh, about some of the other journals, um, and he, he, he said something like this, which is, talk about scathing. There are, there are certain uh, values, tastes, and criteria which were rooted in particular notions of decorum, appropriateness, achievement, and promise, uh, which were being imposed by the editors of some of these other journals. And it is into yeah. this decorum and appropriateness that Jensma uh, so this yeah. speaks. Yeah. And he says, Stanley Terentin, you nut. Yes, don't mess with Mr. T. I agree, Jason Man van Dori sexe. Jigs, jigs, sexe. Who's still driving lately? Fair to mild. Ne, ek wors met my linker oor. I hear you telling for truce. Oh man, keep your cool, man. Don't get involved. Cool it. Don't be heavy. Cool it. Groove. But don't tell your feel. Don't tell you feel. This is your scene. Shake to Aussie Biba, baby, baby easy lay. Come off that homebrew dream. Cool it. Let him blow your mind. Cool it. Groove, but don't tell you feel. Now is not the time to cry. Sanctified I cherry. Sob stations stick like hey, Lester say patience I advise to remain standing while the lift motions passengers to drop tea trays. A one, a two, a three. A discari ruti. <laughs> <laughs> that was him talking to Lionel Abrams, or I guess speaking to the conversation that Lionel Abrams was having with him. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what uh, what you immediately notice from Jensma, uh, not only through the artwork, through the visual work, but um, through the poetry, is this extraordinary conversation with uh, Eastern Europe. Um, with the beat poets, and um, particularly, uh, in fact, Lawrence Ferlinghetti and Allen Ginsberg were published in one of the journals called Virum, um, 
in in the late 60s. Um, so, and obviously Jensma absorbs many of these influences in the poetry. Um, should we move on to talk about politics, Richard? Um, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, I would like to, while you maybe get ready there, read another one, just to confuse our international guests. It's so nice when you guys sit there like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, the pointless objects of riddle. Something, yes. Something about them. It's them glum boys, grim masks, glue boys, blue boys, just don't count. Top pop star tells all. Porno actress reveals all. Minced meat to do, be, do. Mr. Noah Von Ark's shady carnival. Mrs. Von Ark's soft-lined fur. Say, say, say it, say it now. Amakaladi. Chara, chara, chara. Ad infinitum. Amakafir. Ama boon, ama boon, ama boon. Ad infinitum. Ama boon. Kafir, kafir. Ad infinitum. Chara. Ama kaladi, kaladi. Ad infinitum. Karibo. Um, Sanctus Dominus Day. Ad lib all together now. I'm a char black F bloody bullshit brood mm, with rock. <laughs> That's really how we wrote it, by the way. <laughs> Fs are great. Boras are nice. But now that we hate, that we once loved, what about our children? Your exposure to our wonderful people, our cool climate, best in the world, something, yes, something about them. Yeah. Um, can you just plunge straight ahead and read the children? I can definitely do that. We, the children of Sharpville, long since washed clean of bloodstains, have gathered together and are making ready to meet him. For use, the massacred innocents, a special place was kept in heaven. We, the smallest of the dead, once believed in our, in our ignorance that he was a wicked man. We lift up our hands in thanksgiving for the truth that is shown to us as we are gathered here for the last time around this sacrificial altar, preparing to sing praise, waiting to clap our hands again for him who is coming to kill us again. So, um, as, as Richard is, is reading, um, he and I have talked about uh, the politics of this poetry and try to unpack some of it uh, and get inside some of it and understand mm. why um, black poets thought that this was a black poet writing, what mm. was... Um, what was Wapko saying, and what made him allowed to say what he was saying, mm. is the question that um, intrigues us. Kos lach klipaard, skid die baas se plat, geo om die eer wat om toekom, anders is jy poer in jou moer. Pas op vir die wit poeliste, hulle trek dag en dag nog gom met jou gat, al doek sulle by jou vrou. Die oud topie met die blinkkop steek daarom lekker dop. Net jammer die lani strek skewe bek. Groot baas Chris in die jimmel. Sorry vir almal, brein swart, selfs vir wit. Net wit, nes wit gepleisterde graf te gaap. Is het lekker om dominee te wees, ons die riempie pad te wees. Praat groot van superstar Mr. Jesus Christ. Vir ons glim die ster maar skraal. Hm. Do you want to translate um, the last line? Maybe? I, I would love to. Um, yeah, he's basically saying that just the last stanza, no? Or maybe the last. Nes wat gepleister de graf te, is het lekker om doe my te wees, om ons die riempie paard pij te wees. He's basically saying, um, it's nice to be pious and to tell people how to live their lives. Um, but he says, you talk about superstar Jesus, you know? But for us, that star um, is pretty dim, basically. Um, and I guess then the question is, who is who is this we that he's talking about? Um, which is, um, I guess, what we're trying to unpack. Like, is he 
Is he then speaking for black people? Is he speaking on behalf of black people? Is he empathizing or is it um, an assumed voice? Or is he really coming from a space of, of, of true empathy and feeling for the black condition or the black pain? Um, which I think, I mean, I could say yes, you could say no, and tomorrow I could change my answer and say no, and you could say yes. It really depends on how you, how you want to read the, the text. Um, but for me personally, I'll say this, um, as a, a black writer, I was not offended when I read some of his poems at all, but I can understand why someone might be, because it's like you, you want to hang on to your pain and you want to tell the world it's my pain. And um, the guy that's, that's guilty of inflicting this pain or these atrocities on me is now coming to tell me about this, this pain. So I can understand the mind state, why you might want to um, distance yourself from that. But for me, with Wobko in particular, what, what he does so well is he navigates between all these different voices. So at some point, you'd read one poem where it's you can see it's a white guy sitting on a porch enjoying good life, looking at his cattle and there's the sunset. And then in the very next poem, he's a, a servant, a migrant servant, maybe um, cleaning up and doing... But he does it with such with such clinical... He's so precise with it that you really struggle to, to find which one is his voice. And I think the lazy... Um, the lazy reason or explanation could be that, oh no, he was a schizophrenic, so it's okay, he can do that, you know? Um, <laughs> which is probably not the most PC thing to say, but um, also it's, it's um, for me, it, it, it goes much further, it goes beyond that. I think um, uh, Wopko understood what was happening in the country, and um, he tried to articulate that in all the voices that he knew. And um, he wasn't, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's an assumed, all of it is assumed voices, because he speaks it so well. There's colored slang in here. I'm colored and I'm supposed to speak slang. For the Americans, colored is not a racial term. It's a group of, um, I guess, a separate racial uh, group in South Africa. It's still, it's still a racial term. It's still a, it's still, it really is still a racial term, you know? <laughs> um, um, but anyway, so, so for, me, for me in particular, um, him speaking that language that I grew up with um, and not, not being able even even doubting the fact or the credibility of the language speaks volumes. And then there's the nuances that he gets right as well, the subtext and all the, the, the other things that he's not saying that the language implies, that someone that speaks the language from birth sort of implies without necessarily having to say it. Um, so for me, it, specifically with the slang poet pieces, I get that totally. Um, but in the same breath, I think... Um, it's 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 hard to justify to someone else why a white guy would want to write about black pain, you know, or the black condition, um, which is kind of sad because he did it so well. Um, and, and I think at, at the center of this discussion is his use of Afrikaans. Yeah. Uh, because what he finds in his mother tongue um, is a language that's malleable to to what he's trying to do, not only with his own sense of identity um, but his understanding of the way language mm. can work and the possibilities of language and maybe you can read Yabas yeah Yabas. and just uh, the South Africans would know this but the phrase Yabas uh, does that resonate for any of the non-South Africans? Yabas? Yabas yeah. Yes that Yes that Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that my, That's my bad so, Er een noster is een Noors vent. Meneer hier, reie skedels gekatologiseer op rakke, spijkers in my keel, het ons jou geheer en in alle redelijkheid ophaard. Nou, luister mooi hoe ek die borkie sop opslurp. Luister na die sirene. Probeer nou dier jou geweet te loop. Probeer voel hoe die visse jou vlees vreet. Van der Nosters gepraat, as jy sy Afrikaner. I, I think that in that poem, um, that poem for me exemplifies um, the political and the personal anxiety mm. of his position. He cannot be, he cannot not mm. be political in that mm. poem when he asks, are you a South African? Mm. Uh, when he talks about nails in my throat, um, he is not only referring to a political, um, to a political position or a political moment but to his own um, to his own sense mm. of himself yeah and I think in that poem in particular those two things are um, utterly implicated in each other yeah is there something else you want to read at um, this point? I do I'm actually trying to just track it down give me a second 56 
Yeah. You let me work, but you keep the bread. Oh, Mr. Rich Man, you don't know hard times. You pass me wine, no way in this cage. I'm hooked, God's my witness. I better die, wallow in wine and blood. Manier, I tried. Myself, I cannot kill. Manier, I hate. Now, my hate is blind. Now I'm going to love, like hell, I'm going to love you. I'll use your tools, I'll drink the wine, but only after the bread. God's my witness in flesh and blood. And maybe um, we can read a memoriam, Ben Zwane. <laughs> my people, <laughs> coming, coming get ready. Trains are coming. Ain't no room for sinners. Hmm. We're going all the way. I heard a word, Ben, but I fear to say, to hear, tell Anzania. I only say to soft, not loud. Did you tumble down steps? Did you slip on a piece of soap? What the hell did you do? Hmm. Tell me you died. If died of TB? Yeah. Yeah. My people, God get you covered. Let's rail away, all stoned. If winning, dining all day, gonna be great in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big up, brother. <laughs> Um, I think that's pronounced as Zania. <laughs> yeah. I, but you did fantastic. Um, I think that that also just um, in terms of when you when you when, when really reading Wapko, there's so many voices, so many voices. Um, one would seem like a street cat from Corner Elof and Dalvis, um, inner city Johannesburg, and then the next would be this prim and proper Afrikaans writer, um, and then with this one in particular, all we could see or hear was this southern voice um reading it or rather the sudden southern accent or nuances coming through the poem so um that's really what it's all about um if there's a russian person in the house we've got a russian poem as well no no german german oh excuse me german we'll call you, we'll call you up in a minute but i wanted to uh there's a line in there about slipping on a piece of soap yeah um i don't know how many of you for, who, for whom that resonates um do i need to Unpack that line, yes. Um, when people were uh, arrested and taken, particularly to what was then called John Forster, but probably in, in, in countless um, yeah. prisons in South Africa, but John Forster in particular in the, in the middle of uh, Johannesburg, uh, they mysteriously died by slipping on pieces of soap or falling out of uh, eighth floor windows. Yeah. Uh, Steve Biko was one who ostensibly slipped on a piece of soap. Um, can you read? Uh, I uh, wanted to read Cop. On my cop. way to St. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I wanted to read As Cop. We can, yeah. Wait, wait, what page is it? Can you give me quickly? 14. Same for our execution. Okay. Hmm. Um, just to apropos uh, uh, our reading of his uh, it's kind of chameleon-like adoption of, of accents and, um, and discourses. Uh, Wapka was a huge fan of jazz music, and if you read through some of the dedications to his poems, mm. um, he, I just have a, a list here. Uh, there's, a, uh, there, there's some South African writers, Ken Tembo, who's a South African short story writer. Um, Billy the Kid Zambi, who's a pretty much disappeared um, South African saxophonist. Um, Carlos Jomen Dandrade, the Brazilians uh, familiar with that poet. Um, champion da Jack Dupree, the American blues pianist. Jimmy Rushing, the jazz and blues singer, I think he sang in uh, Count Basie's orchestra. Uh -huh. uh, Sunny Boy Williamson, who is a harmonica player and a blues singer. Um, Thelonious Monk. Uh, John Henry Barbie. Archie Shepp. Who's, who's still alive? I don't know. Does anyone know Archie Shep? Six seconds. Yeah. On my way to St. Peter's Gate, I see a sign looming up. Welcome to Soweto. Air conditioned rooms with baths. We can recommend the soap. Yep. Thank you. Um. Uh, 
I just want I want to. <clears throat> By the law of our country, a plant was found guilty. The sentence was carried out before the assembled people. It was first stripped of fear, then hung by its conscience. The children sang a sweet song and pressed leaves in their textbooks. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had a moment there. <laughs> um, I think the last one I want to read is just um, our village. Okay. Since two gents in white suits rolled up, our village is not the same anymore. They pumped our chief full of bullets. They bumped off all our elders. They started raping our woman folk. They keep talking of a new life for us. They say this thing is also elsewhere. They have a whole country tied up. They have come a long way to help us. They want us to have faith in them. Our village is not the same anymore since two gents in white suits rolled up. Um, can you read It's a Good Life? Uh, from Mm, let me show you my clipping. I'll just show you my clipping. The name of his um, third volume of poetry. Mm. <coughs> are, you all, are you all still here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the good life. It's the wide outdoors. It's the rugged felt. It's that good old brand. Established way back, 1984. For instant relief from your pain. So, man, rub that belly, lift that toast, light up a smile, own your own banana republic. <laughs> and installed in installed installments. After doing Paris, London, New York, LA, Rio, Sydney, Tokyo, chauffeur away in your Copacabana dreamboat. Feel your chest swell from the real sugarloaf flavor. Be disgusted at conditions own your own toilet bowl for it's the good life it's the wide outdoors it's the rugged felt it's that good old brand established way back in 1984. um i want to uh change tech slightly um and, and, and try to sort of dig a little bit deeper into mm -hmm. the question of non-racialism um the archive of non-racialism uh, is an archive of some humor for Wapko, but it is also an archive of pain, of great pain. Um, there is a politics of the non-racial, uh, which has its own archive in the stories now being written of the early days uh, of the ANC and the South African Communist Party and other liberation organizations. Um, there is also the non-racialism of, of friendships, personal encounters, meetings of minds, marriages, unions of all kinds between people. Such an archive exists in the private, the domestic realms, where we speak, where we eat together, where we make love, where we debate. Um, but if this is an archive, it is ephemeral, it is delicate, it is susceptible to violation, of course, um, but at the same time, beyond violation, beyond contamination, because of its unrecord unrecordability. Um, but it would seem to me that in, in, ma in the making of both such archives, uh, and in particular in relation to Wapka Yensma, that we adopt um, an ironic stance, and I don't mean irony in a kind of detached uh, way, in, in a kind of cynical way, um, but rather, um, irony is someone like uh, Richard Rorty describes it, and I can hear the Marxists. Uh, <laughs> 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 but he is particularly useful in this, um, in a in a in a definition that I think uh, mm. applies to Wapko, yeah, very pointedly to Wapko. And an ironist, this is um, this is Rorty in contingency irony and solidarity. An ironist is someone who fulfills three conditions. She has radical and continuing doubts about the final vocabulary she currently uses. 
because she has been impressed by other vocabularies, vocabularies taken as final by people or books she has encountered. Two, she realizes that arguments phrased in her present vocabulary can neither underwrite nor dissolve these doubts. Three, insofar as she philosophizes about her situation, she does not think that her vocabulary is cr closer to reality than others. So um, let's hear what go doubt doubting his own vocabularies. I am white and brutal. I come to you after death and leave you completely deserted. A little tenderness, a little care, only hardens my heart. A gentle bayonet, a breeze of bullets, is the voice of my existence. I did not hear you. I won't listen. I did not hear a thing. I am white and brutal. I come to you after death and leave you completely deserted. So, um, Rorty also goes on to say that the ironist understands, um, which, there was a, some discussion I was listening from the back earlier, Sheila, when you were speaking earlier about um, the originary position uh, that you are taking contention with, if, I, if I'm reading you correctly. And I think um, Rorty has quite an interesting <laughs> response to that, because he, his answer to that is, is um, the contingency of, of one's position, and not the original the originary nature of one's position. And in fact, um, in his descriptions of contingency, he um, wants to abandon any idea that your vocabulary is linked to some absolute truth, some originary moment. Mm. Because that would mean that if yours is, mine is not. Um, so the, the ironist faces up to the contingency of his or own most central beliefs um, desires. Uh, she is sufficiently historicist and nominalist to have abandoned the, the idea that those central beliefs and desires refer back to something beyond the reach of time and chance, i.e. some sort of godlike, um, mm. absolute nexus of values. Uh, so here's Jensma being highly contingent. Today is Tuesday. Yesterday was Monday. Tomorrow will be Wednesday, and after that, another day. Time after time, the sea collapses to certain death on its burning beaches. Time after time, our prime minister proclaims lasting peace and nails sharpful to another burning cross. Today is Dingan's day. Yesterday was Republic Day. Tomorrow will be an ordinary day, and after that, a similar day. So, the poet may be the best exemplar of, of the ironist today. Um, this is the person who uses, this is Rorty again, yeah. um, who uses words as they've never been used before and therefore is best able to appreciate her own contingency for she can see more clearly than the continuity seeking historian, particular philosopher, that her language is as contingent as her parents or her historical epoch. She can appreciate the force of the claim that truth is an army of metaphors because by her own sheer strength, she has broken out of one perspective, one metaphoric into another. For although strong poets are, like all other animals, causal products of natural forces, they are products capable of telling the story of their own production in words never before used. Um, so I think what, in Rorty's case, what this allows him to do is to leave his own subject positions wherever they happen to be, uh, and and in some in some way try to enter another subjectivity, another subject position, and even that um, I realise is a, a problematic um, way of dealing with subjectivity. But nonetheless, um, I think this is what Rorty is trying to. Yeah. Think, uh, Jens get it is trying to do. I was sitting on a pavement, pavementing my thoughts. A plainclothes cop breezed up, poking his finger in my ribs. Why are you minding your own business? Why are you so at ease with yourself? Then he starts picking his nose and munching the green away. Without a word, 
Without a grin, he drolled off towards Parktown, and my thoughts pavemented away. Uh, he, he drolled off towards Parktown. <laughs> I think I have to uh, <laughs> try to explain it. Dro oh, but he, he, well, a droll yeah. is a turd, so he turned it off towards <laughs> Parktown. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked a lot about this poem, yeah. uh, mostly because we, I, I didn't hear any laughs, but we, we found it hilarious. <laughs> yeah. uh, we found it hilarious to think of somebody pavementing away, and then the cop comes up and says, mm. does not say, move along, move along. This is the sort of archetypal yeah. moment in which the cop tells the loiterer, um, mm. the black loiterer, yeah. to move Be along. gone, yeah. And he Instead says, he asks him, why are you so at ease with yourself? Why are you minding your own business? <laughs> you know? And then he leaves him at that and picks his nose and turds off. <laughs> <laughs> Just coined a new phrase. Yeah. <laughs> so is he homeless in this poem? Mm. Is he nomadic? Is he black? Is he white? Is he su he's not suburban. He, ass he eschews home and belonging in favor of the pavement. Mm. Um, where he can pavement his thoughts, allow them to sit alongside, be contingent upon the real thoroughfare. This one is a little bit more extreme. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Kick that black dog. I caught some white insects. I tied them to a tin carriage. They are hauling gold from hell. They are kidding themselves. Because I got them all tied up. Because they grafted out all day. Sometimes they will go haywire. Sometime I will die laughing. Kick that black dog. Uh, so in this poem, Richard and I mm. try to um, decipher the voice, the speaker. And he opens with kick that black dog. Mm. And, but then he's not, he's not then, that speaker yeah. in this poem. Yeah. Uh, I caught some white insects, I tied them to a tin carriage. Um, mm, they're hauling gold from hell. We need a, we need a southerner again for, for, for the next one. <laughs> 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 Someone here? Which song? Good. Oh. <laughs> Wait, which one is it? The same one? Yeah. No, are you... Uh, no, today oh, we will be today singing... We will be sing, um, <coughs> yes, we need um, southern accent. <laughs> southern accent? No? One, yes? Try one, try one. All right, oh, me? Oh, Lord, I'm gonna. Oh, Lordy Lord. <laughs> Today we'll be singing a sad song, son. Maybe I should just tone it down a little bit. <laughs> a song of our hunger. We will defy you. Yes, sir, boss. We will crucify the nearest Christ. We will all be living aloud. You know why, son? We carry the carcass of hunger, grave words. Um, all right, mm. another Afrikaans poem. Sorry for you. <laughs> um, why are you reading this one? Um, I think it's because I, I kind of liked it and forced you to include it. No, no, no. <laughs> um, no, what this one in particular it refers to, um, I guess this is more, more of a, a reflection on, on the um, sort of political landscape he was finding himself in and him just, um, I guess, narrating his way through that. But um, with this in particular, with this poem, just to, excuse me, just to give um, some sort of um, foundation, he's talking about Maita um, Sata. Now in Afrikaans, what we would usually refer to as Maita Sata, it could either mean my father's father or my mother's father, depending on who you're talking to. It's a, so it's a very lucid um, sort of interpretation of the, the word, loose rather. Before you start, mm. um, I think that for me, the, um, what's, uh, I, this is a very courageous poem because yeah. it's a poem in which um, Jensma is not afraid to um, He's to, not a, to talk against the freedom fighters uh, exactly. at the time, yeah, exactly. which which was weird because um, they were the freedom fighters and the government was wrong and you don't say anything wrong about the freedom fighters and um, yeah, he's basically telling them, nah, I'm, I'm not interested in any of that, um, or rather the voice that he's employing is saying that. 
My taste ta het lang gelede ook in die mierness jobak gejob. Hy was een klein mier en het gebewe as die baas met hom praat. Hy was die kleinste mier wat in die Carlton Center se kantore vloere en vensters gewas het. En onder in die kelder het hy vir homself leeplek gemaak. Klein le, want hy was klein. To die fighters of freedom, nes siemels, saam met die wind dier die ou sif geloop het, het hy gesê, nee, hy loop nie saam nie, hy is bang vir die baas daarboe. Misschien het hy sy baas Chris gemeen, maar die feite mire het vir hom gesê, nou toe, jy is klein, jy kan spy. Daar was a, daar, maar hy was bang vir die baas daarboe, en het in sy leeg gaan wegkryp, Waar die, maar die mieren wat vir die freedom fight, het om daar gekry en gelag. Jy is klein en bang of treter jy. En omdat hy so klein en niks was, en hy die freedom mieren om gegaffel. En toe, snaaks genoeg, my ta se ta, hy toe nes sy baas Chris, sy arms oopgegooi, tot water uit sy sê, die kruis en die feiter sy oor oopgespeker het. Het hulle verstaan toe die donker val, toe die ingevoerde bokhaar kom bers recht voor die kaltense vertoonvenster in twee stikke geskeer wo het. En toe Shaka se staat, nes brood gereis het, op die selfde ou mier nes, Joe Buck. So, in that last stanza, I'm just gonna, shall I yeah. translate a couple yeah. of things in that last, so, the character in this poem is a, is a, a small ant who makes his <coughs> home in the bottom of the Carlton Center. I don't know how many of you yet have seen the Carlton Center in Joburg. And hiding in the Carlton Center, he's approached by the freedom fighters who say to him, you're small, you can spy, or are you a traitor? But he's afraid to go with the freedom fighters because he's afraid of Dibas Darbur, who is both Dibas, mm. his white employer, but also Chris and Yimmel, and he talks about Jesus Christ mm. as Chris, Chris in, in, in heaven. Um, and it's funny, the last stanza says, just like Bas Chris, Bas Chris, mm. he opened his arms as on the cross. And the water that came out of his side hit the freedom fighters straight in the eye. Mm. Even though he was so small, mm. were they now frightened? Did they understand how the darkness falls? And when the imported mohair blanket mm. is torn in two in the window of the Carlton Center, and when Shaka... Shaka's basically his empire. His his empire, yeah. Yeah. rises like bread on the same old antique. Joe Buck. 